everyone, features a 13 back again for another edition of What's On Deck. We're getting out what is new and upcoming in the world of playing cards this week. This might be the biggest episode I've ever done of What's On Deck because we, we've gotten some of the biggest news in the playing card world uh, that I never thought you know, we would see anything like this before, but it's happened. Uh, and I'm not talking about the fact that I created a new playlist for Riffle Suffle, but you can check that one out if you want. I'm talking about this news. Angel Playing Cards, the biggest card company in Japan, has bought GPI. Gaming Partners International. Gaming Partners International, if you're not familiar with them, they produce Gemico and Paulson playing cards used in a lot of casinos in North America. Angel produces almost exclusively casino decks for use in Japan and Asia. Good partnership for them. Uh, they, and it's all done. They acquired them. That's huge news that in a playing card world. Wait. You mean there's been another bigger acquisition that's happened since this? Really? Cartamundi has acquired the USPC. That's right. Cartamundi. Who puts out these guys? The Ace Authentic Decks, among others, has bought these guys. That is huge. Two of the biggest playing card companies. They, they are the biggest playing card companies in the world. I've gotten married, <laughs> essentially. Um, Cartamundi, of course. Is an old company they date back to the 1600s, I believe. 1700s, I guess it's the yeah, the 1700s. I can't recall. Wait, it's, it says on here somewhere, doesn't it? <laughs> um, for over 200, nearly 250 years now, they've been around. Yeah, it's the 1700s, I believe. 17, whatever it was. Um, <laughs> they've been around for quite some time. They've been a huge card company in Europe. I believe they also own Grimaud, which is you know, the biggest company in France for cards. At least, um, well, let's look at their brands, actually. Well, they also own Copay. <laughs> Um, uh, I know that going to searching out Grimaud, it basically led me to Cardinal Mooney's website, so I assume they own them in one way or another. Um, of course, USBC, they're massive, especially in North America. Producing, of course, either popular bicycle brand, B, Tally Ho. Cardinal Mooney is known for Ace Authentics and a few other brands. Cardamunde recently has improved their stocks and finishes by leaps and bounds and have been producing custom decks for Kickstarter and other creators, which had been something that USBC had done a lot of going, you know, back to the start of Kickstarter, essentially. Of course, more recently, Cardamunde has replaced USBC as a producer of decks for Illusionist. And uh, that they've been growing quite a bit, uh, Cardamunde, that is. Now, of course, Cardamunde, biggest company in Europe, has bought USBC, the biggest company in North America, for playing cards. It's huge. I didn't think we would ever see anything like this, the two biggest card companies in the world together. We haven't seen any major acquisitions like this, I mean, aside from the GPI one, <laughs> uh, since Basically, USBC bought up oil in the 90s and Arco in the 80s. And I was a kid during those times, so I wasn't even aware of that stuff going on. I didn't even know those two companies existed for the most part. Hell, I don't think I ever saw an Arco when I was a kid. Oil? Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, it's, it's huge. You, uh, Carter Moon has basically said they're not planning any major changes. Obviously, it's not right now. Um, and it would be, I think, it would be a mistake for them to drop any of the major USB-C brands because um, 
they're very recognizable and they do very well and they'll, they'll make money uh, it even says here USB-C made yes Carter Moon Day had a revenue of approximately 440 million dollars last year USB-C I believe was something like 120 or something so both huge companies uh, oh yeah, today $112 million. And of course, USB-C also owns Fournier, another acquisition they made, which is a big company in Spain. So, Carter Moon Day has basically got everything now. Almost a monopoly. Of course, we still have competition in the form of the Taiwan Playing Card Company, aka Legends, aka Expert, aka Hanson Chen, <laughs> and whoever else. Uh, and of course, NPC, more arts, there's some competition out there. It's not exactly a monopoly, but it's big. It is big. What else is I going to say about this? I never thought I'd be talking about something like this in one of my What's On Decks, but here we are. Uh, of course, apparently, yeah, I see it dates back to 1765, Carter Moon, the USB-C dates back to 1895. Both pretty big. Oh, yes, there we go. They also own uh, Grimaud and Copec. So, yeah, but pretty much... Uh, Carter Moody owns everything now, except in Asia. Uh, and they're coming for you, Taiwan Play Card Company. They're going to come to you with an offer, and you're going to want to not refuse. Uh, USB-C currently had been owned by Newell Brands for some time now. Newell owns a hell of a lot of stuff, too. Papermate, the pen, which I don't have one on me here. Sarpy. <laughs> uh... Oster and Sunbeam, which you probably have in your kitchen, or you might have Food Saver. They own a crap ton of stuff. Rubbermaid, they got a first alert. They got a lot of huge companies under their portfolio. And they decided, you know, we'll get rid of USB-C. We'll get that out of our hands. <laughs> and maybe it'll be for the best. Uh, it's probably good that, as some others have said, that Carter Moore did the uh, USB-C which had been rumored to be on, you know, on the market for some time now. It's probably good that they've been bought out by an actual card company who knows what the hell they're doing, as opposed to some other random company like Newell Brands, who knows nothing about playing cards. <laughs> um, because Newell Brands, they just own a bunch of crap. They probably don't care that much about you and me buying playing cards, you know. The collector, the medicine, they, they probably don't care that much. They just want you to buy this stuff. Anyways, uh, hopefully, there'll be some good changes. Hopefully, we'll see some improvements to, to this. Because Ace Authentics, they're okay quality. However, they are not USB-C bicycle quality. And that needs to improve. And hopefully, Ace Authentic will become a bigger brand in North America as well. We'll see. Anyways, and... There is hope that uh, the Bicycle and B brands will become a bigger thing in Europe and elsewhere. Because they're apparently not that big there. Anyway, let's get on with other stuff that pales in comparison to that with Kickstarter. <laughs> First of all, we got Metropolitan Playing Cards by Samuele. Samuele, 9% fun at 25 days to go. It, well, it looks nice in a spreader fan, that's for sure. However, I don't understand what the back design has to do with a metropolitan. <laughs> um, a metropolitan, I should say. What did I say? Metropolitan? Good word. It's printed by USB-C, apparently. It's an interesting back design, but again, I don't know what that has to do with the name. $7,777 gold. How did you come up with that figure exactly? It sounds very random. $11 on the early word, only 33 available. So far, only a third of them have been snatched up. And it's based on paintings, I see. It's based on a painting called the Metro Metropolitan, if I can speak. <laughs> There'll be 1,337 decks printed, 
give or take 10% in all USB-C. <laughs> Borderless VAT design, you can finish for stock. There is a stretch goal for a secret embossed tuck, whatever that means. <laughs> also a stretch goal for custom faces and pips and a numbered seal. Okay, I think this would be better if you actually had custom faces from the get-go. As opposed to going, oh well, I'll design something if you pay me enough money. No thank you. If you're not going to put in the effort, you're not going to get my money. Uh, they also have stretch goals for, uh, well, completely custom between two ace and pips. But whatever that means. Two aces? Are you sure it's not two tokers? So you're telling me it's completely standard generic faces right now. Even the ace and the jokers? Alrighty then. <laughs> it's not going to fun in my opinion. It may, but there's a lack of artwork being shown, a lack of tough case, a lack of faces, a lack of customization of the faces. Moving on, we have Paper Kings by Artisan Playing Cards. Funded 26 days ago. I do believe this is a relaunch. Curious about this company. I can't, I don't know, let me see more here. Anyway, um, eh, not really my cup of tea. I mean, the court cards, it just looks like a bunch of colors and shapes. I mean, you can kind of maybe sort of see a, a semblance of a figure, but not really. <laughs> Designed by Mike, because that's not random at all. <laughs> okay, there's some of his other artwork. Printed by USB-C. 5,000 decks being produced via USB-C for a project. It is funded. Pretty little goal for 5,000 decks. That's a, that's a dollar a deck right now, Canadian, that they've got the funding for. Something doesn't add up there. <laughs> Pretty sure it's not going to be that cheap. Not to mention you're not even factoring shipping costs. Um, so buy everywhere, I would say. It's an interesting borderless back design. It's good for fanning and stuff like that. Cardists will love it. I'm sure that's mostly who's backed it. It's cardists. Faces don't really do it for me. They're interesting, I suppose. But I don't know how I feel about them. Interesting top case. Although unnecessary. Um, so this is TCC playing cards because Edge is on here and he designed this as well. And they said, we put this out. It was our first deck that we did. So they basically just said that they are TCC. Also, they have a luxury edition apparently by Lindsay, who also has his own projects on Kickstarter. Don't know what that edition includes. Uh, I did want to see something here. You know, it's funny, I'm pretty sure I've seen this project elsewhere. Anyway, moving on, not my cup of tea. We got the U.S. National Park Point Cards by Lan Hong. 61% funded, 26 days to go. It's been done before. It's called the Parks Project, the Parks Game, whatever it is. It was on Kickstarter. There was a deck there. Uh, oh my god. It's minimalist designs. You're designing something based on U.S. national parks, and you're making it minimalist. Who the hell would want that? <laughs> like, that kind of defeats the purpose of showcasing, like, the beauty of national parks by making it minimalist also it looks like a uh, horribly minimalist back design delivery starts august 2nd printing finishes by july 28th project ends okay the, the campaign ends on july 5th a month after the kickstarter launches 
They're expecting it to be finished printing by July 28th. Like three weeks later, you won't even get the money from Kickstarter for like a week and a half or two weeks, whatever it is. And who is printing this anyways? I mean, that could help, but, um... Okay, it's going to be printed by WJPC, which is in China. Even so, uh, it's going to be, it's not going to be done in three weeks, not to mention how is it going to be sipping it and fulfilling it. Is it going to be, be going by a boat, which will take a month, or is it going to be by airplane? Anyway, um, yeah, I have my concerns about that one. Next, we got perplexity playing cards. Will I be left perplexed? Let's find out if I'm going to be perplexed. By 10th Dimension Productions. 7% funded, 26 days to go. <sighs> wow, that's a, that's a big goal. $10,500, I guess it's Canadian. Mm, no. Okay, that's US. Um... 15 bucks US for one of these decks. Only a thousand to be produced in V1. So he's planning more versions. Uh, it's not overly exciting. Three colored standard core cards, green for the hearts and diamonds. To make sense, however, it's not the same green that you see within the Ace of Spades or on the back design. It's a brighter, more neon -y green from the looks of it. Looks like a very simple standard tuck case. Very generic Cardamundi style Joker and printed by USB C. It looks very generic, <laughs> um, and it doesn't look like it's gonna fund at this rate. Nothing perplexing about that, pun intended. Speaking of green, <laughs> there's a lot of green this week apparently. We got the Contour Samrock Green Point Cards by Jason Wen, 68% funded, 10 days to go. I have a feeling it's going to fund by the end. However, is this the best you can do, Jason? Just recoloring? Like, this is like the fourth time he's recolored his decks. How about something new and different for a change? That would be nice. <laughs> but there you see the back design, a lot of circles and dots. Bossed slash linen finish, matte tuck case, printed by... Somebody doesn't say who's printing it. I believe it's NPC. And I mean it's okay. Not really liking these pips, especially on a number card. They're too hard to identify. Like I mean that could be clubs, it could be spades. It's hard to tell what the hell that is. And then again for the court cards, it looks like there's a lot of space here. They could have put a pip in there. Just me. I hate it when there's like an empty space here. It looks like it's missing something. Um, and that is that. He's not showing a whole lot of artwork. Here's what it is. I'm curious about this one because oftentimes this drinking game uses a fairly traditional deck of cards. And usually it's horrible and fails like this one is. <laughs> it's got one dollar pledged out of fifteen hundred dollars Australian. Um And not even sign anything, whatever. <laughs> Moving on, Ouroboros playing cards by See It First. Put by Card of Monday. It is 55% funded, 24 days to go. I think I've heard of this one before. I might have seen it on Instagram. I don't really recall. It's a very nice tuck case uh, from Boston and Foils from the looks of it. Two linen B9 Fittis Slimline Board, whatever that is. Must be the new ones that Elizabeth has been using. Fit stuff. 
And they've done another prompt if you am curious what that is. Come on, why doesn't it just let me... It's so annoying. And they are nice modified court cards using the standard body, but obviously there's modifications. They got the women got weapons. You don't want to see a woman with a weapon because women can be this is enough as is. Uh but it's it's pretty nice looking. Nice ace of spades. And in the back design, uh, it looks okay from what I can see. Oh, look at that. King of Hearts is a snake, or half a snake. The other side is committing suicide. Interesting. Custom aces throughout. Joker is right there. Pretty nice back design. Looks mirror image. And there's some reveals of some of the cards. That's cool. Neck tattoo. I haven't seen that before. Uh, two hundred sixty DSM black plaky. Uh, stock for the tough case, that's interesting. Embossing and foils. Venom, it says on it. Flap, pretty cool. Um, custom brick box, it looks like. It, it's not bad, it's pretty interesting. It's customized and thought out. Uh, fulfilled by gamblers. I don't have any major concerns. But I do want to see what else they produced. Oh, so this is a relaunch. They previously did this one. Apparently on June the 3rd and cancelled it right away. Then they relaunched it. <laughs> Don't know what was with that. But I'm curious. Hmm. Okay. So they had a 10,000 euro goal. And I guess they figured they're not going to fund. So we might as well relaunch it with about a third of the goal. That makes a whole lot of sense. Next up, we got these circuit playing cards by uh elephant playing cards it is funded 15 days to go they had some issues with their previous decks the uh cyberpunk decks there was two decks um that some people reported uh a misprint i i was one of those people i know it's a misprint where there was a different color on one index than it was supposed to be and they're going to be reproducing two of the colors and we send them to back, so that's good stuff. There's a mix up in printing, but this one is the next one circuit. The other one also had kind of circuits going through it, I guess you could say. Apparently, there's four different decks. Again, I don't like that. Uh, it's one thing when creators say, hey, here's a deck of cards, or two decks of cards. But apparently, that's no longer enough. Now they want to sell you half a dozen decks in one project. Fuck. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Stop trying to get all of our monies. Because we can only afford so much. And that's one thing that creators don't seem to think a whole lot about. It's a... Uh, they're asking a lot from really what's not a whole lot of people. <laughs> Anyways, um... Nice pips and everything, but I feel like it's been done before. The court cards, they're okay. I'm not sure what I really feel about them. Those ones and this green color, I don't like at all. It seems unnecessary to do such a bright ass color like that with a gray background. Moving on, so let's see, we got rainbow white. It's going to have a rainbow foil type look to it. And there's your artwork for your court cards. This is your back design, by the way. It's just a bunch of circuitry. It's like a circuit board. It's okay, but it just feels kind of lacking something, I think. Uh, then you got this ice blue. With subtle aqua circuits on a cool color palette. There it is. It's interesting. It's a nice color scheme. Um, interesting back. I don't know if it's going to be that shiny. Realistically, I doubt it. And it's a nice tuck. 
And then there's neon green. This is the one that perplexes me the most. Um, it just doesn't make, I just don't, the gray and then green, bright ass green. I don't know. It seems like this is one color too many. The other two I don't mind so much. The last one I don't mind either. And then black borders with gray faces. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. This next one I don't mind. It's a PCB edition circuit board. Uh, it's PCB is printed circuit board. It actually be kind of interesting. Well, I'm not sure. But let's, let's read on here. Metallic inks on the card fronts. And this one's in the traditional circuit board color. It's a lot of green on the faces, but um, it does represent these circuit board colors. And you look at the backs, it's got that color as well. This is what I would say, though. I would say do this deck, only this deck, perhaps the other ones that stretch goals, because this one actually has a circuit board color to it. And even more so, what I would do is I would make the bat design silver foil to match a circuit board, maybe with some gold foil as well, gold foil details. Make it look like an authentic circuit board. You know, add some other details in there, add some other colors, add some foil, make it nice and shiny. That's what I would run with. Instead, you just get four decks with circuits running from them. They're all the same. You got nice tuck cases. Like, make this for the back design. The foil, that would be good. As it is, eh, I have to pass. Moving on. Amsterdam playing cards. Is this going to be pornographic? <laughs> By Tricks and Beats. 30% funded. 24 days to go. Minimalist deck. The skyline of Amsterdam. Printed by Carter Moon Day. Let's have a look. Of course, it features a triple X. Is that in the skyline of Amsterdam too? A big triple X? Because I feel like it should be. <laughs> Not that I've ever been there. But, I mean, we all know what Amsterdam is known for. <laughs> it is a famous sign. Apparently there. And it says Amsterdam. It's 8 euros on the early bird. Which is fine. I suppose. I almost feel like this should be on the back design. This whole thing as opposed to just the triple X. Because there's a lot of blank space on there. That they could use up. Court cards are standard. But they've been modified for some reason. They have cheese. The kings are holding Dutch cheeses. How exciting. The queens. Oh, oh my god, that's horrible. Uh, well, obviously they're designed to look like prostitutes. Red lipstick, cleavids, and Dutch tulips in their hands. And it looks just weird. Not very proportionate. They just took a standard court card and they added some cleavids and some lips. The Jacks, let me guess. Oh, the Holding Dutch Weed. Of course, that's another thing they're known for. The Holding Weed. I thought for sure this would be the customers. <laughs> Maybe they are the customers. Ah, they got the design on the Ace of Spades, which is fine. Oh, good. The Jokers are penises. Or at least it looks like it. <laughs> or maybe it's weed. I don't know. The Tuck Ace is rather bland and generic. This is actually going to be the front. They put it on the back on the prototype for some reason. And this is going to be the back, obviously. Printed by Carter Moon Day. Additionally cut. Crust stock. Additionally cut. Are you talking about USB-C or Carter Moon Day? Because I don't know. Crust stock. Additionally cut. They're not Carter Moon Day. Uh, they're not Carter Moon Day terms. You don't see that with Carter Moon Day. But it says Super Lux Crust Stock to a beat. I think that's what Illusionist has been using lately, I suppose. Free magic trick with every deck. Oh, good. Um, yeah. Is that 19 euros to ship? 
everywhere. That's a problem. If it's going to be 19 euros to ship a deck to Canada or the US, it's not going to fund. That's way too expensive for shipping. And everyone in the US is accustomed to free shipping. <laughs> Nobody in the US likes to pay for shipping, buddy. <laughs> That's going to be a problem for you. Next, we got Nihilism Playing Cards by Nihilism. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing it correctly. It's funded 23 days to go. Um, it's a big X. <laughs> Keep it simple. Yes, simple's fine. However, too simple is not good. And it's a standard chord card that's been recolored and simplified because simple. And there's an X on there instead of a pip, which is okay, I guess. And in the back design is a freaking X. Who designed this? Zach Mueller? I mean, that's horrible. I could design that. Easy. It's inspired by the King's Playing Cards from Daniel Madison. Oh, no? I don't think so. Well, okay, the, the, the Ace of Spades, but not really, in my opinion. Um, I mean, I kind of like the court cards aside from the X, but the back design... <laughs> And it's going to be put by Hanson Chan, and I guess fulfilled by them, on their latest stock, Vintage Stock, whatever that means. It's as thin as Luxury Stock, but it's stiff between Luxury and Classic Prototype Stock. And that means nothing to me, because I don't know much about those stocks and finishes. Moving on. <laughs> but Cedo Spirit Point Guards by Kenneth Hill. <laughs> Um, let's have a look at this. It's funded. It's a very, very low goal of just over four hundred and fifty dollars Canadian. It's like four hundred or three hundred fifty dollars US, whatever it is. So that's not good, <laughs> right off the bat. The Ace of Spades looks like it was ripped off a uh, card experiment project, to be honest. The court cards are interesting, but simple. Very minimalist. You got fists on some of the jacks. Others, you got uh, daggers, I guess. Another one, you got a Basito guy. It's just seems like there's no rhyme or reason, kind of. Why does this just one fist say Samurai on it? What does that have to do with anything? The queens have no females on them. They're just scary looking dudes. And more weird stuff going on with the kings. It's just a bunch of samurai type stuff on, on the faces for the hell of it. The back design is alright. It appears to be very imaged. I assume it is. However, it looks like the borders are not even all the way around. The borders look thicker on the top and bottom and the sides. And no lucky <laughs> on that part. Um, yeah, not really feeling it. Apparently they also have red and gold colors. Risks and challenges. Should be the printing quality and shipping date. Okay, <laughs> so we don't even know what the printing quality is going to be. So that's horrible. You don't know who's printing it. There's three different colors. They have a very mediocre goal. That's an absolute 100% pass. Moving on. Uh, we're on to other stuff that we've already seen. Carter Street Club from David Goldclank, aka Vanda. 55% funded 14 days ago. It's not looking good again, buddy. It's not looking good again, I have to say. Um. Seafarers from Joker the Thief has funded 21 days to go. I think they've lost some support after what happened previously with the last project. Shockingly, there's no collector's edition box in this project for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> World Playing Cards by Jerome Lugenbuhl. 
is funded 21 days to go. State of Utopia playing cards by Pierre Hüter is 91% funded 21 days to go to fund just a matter of time, I would imagine. Paramore playing card by Jackson Jokers is 7% funded 20 days to go. Don't see it happening. Reincarnation by Playing Cards Donna is funded 20 days to go. Pretty nice stacks of cards. Tuba playing card by Andrew Morley is 20% funded with 20 days to go. That's not a good sign. Don't think it's going to fund. Um, first edition Tokyo Magic Junction point card by Tokyo Magic Junction, 52% funded, 19 days to go. Don't see it happening. Tomorrow cards today by Tomorrow Cards is 0% funded, as it should be with 31 days to go. Nobody wants that today, and they don't even want it tomorrow. So put that back in your time machine, send it back to the future. We'll create a new, different future. Yay, I gotta go turn off the oven. I'll be right back. Hold on. Mmm, smells good. Well, tender like yummy. Next up, <laughs> Deep Sea Plane Cards by Alexer. By Nazarov. By Nazarov, there we go. 10% <laughs> funded, 18 days to go. Don't see it happening. Hello, it's better than some of the other decks you've seen this week. <laughs> Liber Luderum Point Guards by Ian Cumpsey is funded, 18 days to go. Good for him. Um, I got nothing against him. If you want to check that project out, by all means. This is not, I'm just not really feeling it. Plus, there's some of the other projects I pledged for. You know, I said I was going to pledge for more projects on Kickstarter. Here I am. Uh, Clockwork, Empire City by Swab Dex. 61% funded, 18 days to go. Still a chance at funds. However, I think it would help immensely if they had a GIF image showing the actual animation, which they did not last I checked. Nilo Deck by Vanya Domingos. 18% funded, 17 days to go. I don't see it happening. Maya, Playing Cards Relaunched by Olin Art. As funded, this is like the third attempt, 14 days to go. Sunrise Playing Cards by Fran CG is funded, 16 days to go. The Lammy Game by Mogul Lamb, 0% funded, 14 days to go. It's not going to fund. Poker Zaps Blind Poker Playing Card Deck by James Pinecoffer is 10% funded, 12 days to go. That's not going to happen. Choice Cloverback Green Edition by Penguin Magic. Is 74% funded 11 days to go. They may or may not make it at this rate. They have unlocked the purple deck, thankfully. However, that still has not increased funding a whole lot. Club Pits Point Guards by Dwayne Cardenas is 49% funded 11 days to go. Don't see it happening at this rate. High Lords Firstborn Volume 1 by Ace Collectible Cards is funded 9 days to go. That's good stuff. Uh, Paisley, Magical Gold and Magical Black by Diamond Point Cards is funded as well, well funded, 46 hours to go. Apparently there's a new deck on out, I assume that's just a gold one, or black one, whatever. Uh, Split Point Cards by Kyle, it's 2% funded, 36 days to go. Please just cancel it, nobody's interested. Just give it up. <laughs> uh, Douglas Steam by Julio Ribera is funded, 4 days to go. Uh, Swordswoman by Alexander Petty is 30% funded 3 days to go. It's not going to happen. Boring a miracle. Dictomia, uh, by, designed by Sotsu is well funded 7 days to go. Despite the fact that it lacks grammar, Asian should not be in, you know, it should have a capital letter to say. <laughs> uh, Silver Wolf Playing Cards by Luke Campbell. 70% funded, 50 days to go. It's dead. It's not going to happen. Vincent by Danielle. 3% funded, 28 days to go. Another one that this probably just cancel because it's not going to happen. Vintage label playing cards. Premier Black and Reserve White by Craig Maidment is 80% funded, 26 days to go. Solid chance it funds. Decent chance it funds. I'm not going to say solid because it may not fund. I mean, it's gotten a lot of backers already. Is it going to find more in the next 26 days? 
Possibly not. Uh, Maserata point guard by Emmanuel Valtier. 74% funded. Three days to go. Uh, go check that one out if you haven't done so already. Hopefully it funds. Nokia, a Nokia Angels point guard. I need to slow down. By an all point guard. is 4% funded. 51 hours to go. It is not going to happen at all. And uh, if you did your quality, integrity, justice, funded. So that's good stuff. Moving on. Uh, we, a few other minor things I guess we could talk about. I wanted to mention something here from Defata. If it will load up, that would be stupendous. And that is this. Lost Deer Jungle Plane Cards from Bokobo or Sandy. <laughs> This is a project, this is a deck that was on Kickstarter a little while back, it was a project that was there, that was uh, cancelled because, or suspended by Kickstarter because it was, uh, for one, it was associated with Bokobo and it was a different account, and that's why I reported it, but on top of that, it apparently has copyright issues. But that's not the only issue, clearly. Because this was just on Kickstarter and it was shut down. However, it is now available for sale. Defada is making it available. I know Hocus Pocus has it. Which tells me that these decks were 100% already printed by the time Bookable put it on Kickstarter. Or Sandy, I should say. Put it on Kickstarter. That's a no-no. Bookable had been added to my Kickstarter Hall of Fame because they had been violating Kickstarter rules left and right. Putting decks on Kickstarter that are already produced is against the rules. It's supposed to be getting funding to produce what you're selling, not selling something that's already produced. There's not a store. Copyright infringements on various projects. That's not good either. Having multiple accounts, four or five accounts, to run different projects, also not allowed. I would say, you know, avoid bookable going forward, at least their projects on Kickstarter. Moving on, I noticed something new at Bicycle Cards on the Bicycle website, which I thought was worth mentioning, it's a pretty cool new deck, right? It's a new Coca-Cola deck, because why not? <laughs> uh, the other ones, uh, they're not new, unless you haven't seen them before or gotten them, but they're not exactly new. And it is, it is, yeah, refreshing, um, what else was there? Um, I wanted to mention that somebody showed me a picture of a new Gold Foil Superior Brand deck. It's not available yet anywhere. I guess it was uh, available at some kind of convention in, in Asia. It should be coming soon. I'm surprised it's just Gold Foil and not Silver Foil as well or other foils, but I imagine we'll be releasing a full line at some point in time. I would suspect anyways. Um, or maybe they're just going to go with Gold, maybe Silver. Vanda, I wanted to mention something here. As well, remind me. I just I forgot to check out United Cards. So, do a little searching at the same time here. Ah, <laughs> uh, where is it? Open up. Yeah, I don't see it here for some reason. Ah, there it is. Zero released. This is a new deck to put the other day. Only a hundred pre-numbered decks from, I guess, Cardistry Club. So I imagine it could be more than that. 
But these are, and they're, they're sold out already. Simple back designs, borderless. Reminds me a little bit, I would say, of the circus deck from from uh, playing card decks, just saying. And I'm saying they whipped it off, but it's very similar. Uh, very straightforward faces. There you see the faces. There you go. Very straightforward. Minimalist court cards. Not a huge fan of that. But I figured hey, it's it's limited. It's numbered. Might as well get it. I don't like that the Tuckies has something completely different on it, on it. But I guess they're trying to keep in line. They're trying to make everything look like a series. Which is cool, I suppose. But they're out of stock, so that's unfortunate. Riffle Shuffle has something here as well. It is this, Play Dead, which I mentioned before. Uh, it is still available. Apparently they printed 10,000 of these decks. So they're going to be around for a while. Usually they print very limited quantities. And they sell out very quickly. This one... Far from it, which is kind of surprising. Um, printed by USB-C, B, Crust, Fittis, and Stock. Limited edition of 10,000. 10,000 is not that limited. It's limited, it's not infinite. But it's not ex extremely limited. And there you see the faces. Pretty cool, I would say. Um... Now the Jerry Nuggets reprints um, that are coming to Kickstarter soon. July 1st, I believe. Are apparently going to be produced by Expert Playing Cards, but printed by United States Playing Card Companies, which is just mind-boggling in of itself. But of course, now you take it into consideration that Carter Moon has since they own USBC. They don't officially own USBC until later this year. It could still be rejected by, you know, for some reason or another. But it's unlikely. Um, also, I should have mentioned this while I was on the Vanda website. Oh, good. What's happening in the world now? Got some news notification. <laughs> Anyways, um, So, Vanda is now doing auctions via the website for their limited edition uh, Planet Stacks, uh, among others. Wow! Somebody's bid $111 for one of the decks. That's what that sold for. $50 price statements from the first letter up. Are you people idiots? Like, why are you paying that much money? It should be, he should just be bidding like 70 bucks at most. And that's even way too much money. That's just absolutely absurd that people are paying that much money for a deck of cards. Good word. By the way, coming to House of Playing Cards June 9th. Long awaited, barely anticipated. 1 p.m., that's today, by the way. 1 p.m. Eastern. Should be available that by very soon. Um, let me just double check that actually. It's a new Nock 3000 X1. They decided to go into the future this time. And apparently it's going to be an Instagram Live as well. <laughs> uh, it's a futuristic design of Nock point cards, as you can see. How exciting. Oh, I like that. They've made it, they've modified the backs for cardistry purposes a little bit. At least they've done a little something with it. Would you like me to review it? <laughs> um, oh, Future 15 for a discount code. Ooh, they got two different ones. They also got a limited edition. Oh, you yeah, got the Nox available as well. I want to know what the difference is between this and that. Okay, one's light, one's dark. I see. Uh, 12 pack bundle as well. I'm surprised they never released the Visa decks in red. I mean, they had them in green and blue. Why not red? I'm giving them ideas. By the way, there was supposed to be a knock release every month. That hasn't happened. These missed 
a bunch of releases or didn't have anything to sew for it. Anyways, moving on, I wanted to mention a couple other things. One other thing for Sarah. Flux by Lotus and Hand and Art of Play. Why does everyone have to do Lotus and Hand X Art of Play or whatever X Illusionist? Madison X this. Like, really? Oh, good lord. Um, <laughs> I'm going to turn off the audio. God. Apparently, the video is not available. Come on. I want to see what the hell this is. The flux. Oh boy. Today. I just should be off. That's it. That's the back design. How exciting. So I know the, uh, it's funny, the House of Point Cards isn't supposed to be available until noon Eastern Time, or noon, or 1 p.m. Eastern Time, which is noon my time. It's only 11.30 my time, and it's already available. That's an interesting gaff card. Uh, really don't know how I feel about these ones. Printed by the USB-C. Explores the boundary between static and motion. Comes in a sleek and sturdy Plastic box. Okay. Also, two striped plastic cards. One vertically and one horizontally. You know, um, I'll probably pick it up just out of curiosity and interest. It's coming out 11 a.m. Pacific on Tuesday the 11th. So, uh, go check that out. If you're interested. So, that is that for this week. Been a long enough video. Apologize for being so long. Next week should hopefully be shorter. <laughs> um... Yeah, I don't see anything else new to talk about. So that is that. Comment, rate, subscribe. Uh, let me know what... Wait a minute, I forgot a couple of things. <laughs> I forgot a couple of things. And then put them on my list because I do it every week. PlainCardDex.com By the way, again, special thanks to Bull Royer for everything he set my way. They got the Blood and Beast Gilded Dex and Kickstarter available. He sent us to... Fusion playing cards, which have a Hanafuda theme. Check them out if you're not sure what the hell that is. Uh, a bunch of coins. Book on the Pharaoh. Dreamers Avatar. I'm waiting for that deck. It's on my. It's on the way apparently. Um, I got a bunch of stuff from Albino Dragon, as you can see. If you didn't get any of these decks, or you're a fan of them, the Aliens movies, Supernatural, Princess Bride, Cthulhu. Go check them out. What else do they have that's new? Let's see. They got the, uh, they got a bunch of new knocks. The Midnight Knocks, the Color Grades, the Nocturne. 30 bucks for Nocturne. Yeesh. Uh, they still got those Kingslayer Zebras. <laughs> zebras. Zebras, as they would say in the UK. Uh, and a bunch of other stuff. That's fine. Ooh, they got the Fort Knox for a whole 50 bucks. Okay, if you pay 50 bucks for a Knox, you might want to go get your head examined. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, geez Louise. Alright, and of course the Motley Pack. It's on sale, apparently. Stickers. How many stickers? For 18 bucks. That's pretty expensive. Anyways, um, okay. So you got that. A lot of cool stuff going on here. Moving on, one more thing. Murphy's Magic. Special thanks to Murphy's Magic for sponsoring me. She's pretty cute. Uh, and allowing me, uh, to purchase stuff wholesale. And also sending me stuff as well. Some of my orders. Now, would you please open up? Please. Alright. I don't think there was a whole lot of new or exciting here, but we'll see. Maybe something's popped up. It's last I checked. Not likely since they're not open on weekends. Uh, okay, they got the bicycle 
Reverie, Marked Edition, Lost Deer Jungle, sent to Olympians, a bunch of Kickstarter stuff, basically. The Hesslers, oh good, I overpaid for decks again with the Hesslers and the Play Dead. Good stuff. <laughs> I really need to be a little more patient and wait to see if stuff shows up at Murphy's Magic before throwing money at different people. <laughs> Because I could save some money if I did that, obviously. Anyways, so yeah. As you can see, some stuff is on the way to Magic Sops and Card Sops, you, you. So that is that. Comment, rate, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Shane, I more. Thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, see ya.